right, welcome back, everybody. Um, this would be lesson three. Today we're going to cover um, the run-up and your initial takeoff. Um, I'll do some more pattern work and landings in another episode. But just kind of going step by step through this as usual. Again, from the perspective of a real-world pilot who has not flown in a long time, trying to remember this stuff so I can do it again. Um, so in the last episodes, we did our pre-flight. We did our uh, before starting engine, we started the engine, did some very um, ungraceful taxiing, if you remember that. Um, but uh, a little bit smoother today. I did obviously, have, or maybe not obviously, but I have reset uh, the simulator since. And um, so, you know, I got my fuel on, I did all my pre flight stuff. Um, and we're in the same, basically, same configuration we were in at the end of the last one. Uh, so here is where we're going to uh, learn about the run-up and uh, what we need to do to basically check out the engine just before we leave and depart the runway. Uh, normally we would do this facing into the wind. Um, I do have clear skies selected, so there's really no wind, so it doesn't matter what direction you face. But if you have any kind of a windy day, you really want to point the airplane into the wind as best you can. You can't always get it right um, on a taxiway, but... Um, if you know, you find a run-up area, if there isn't one, like right here, you can just do it right here at the uh, hold short line, which is not quite as visible as the last episode, but we're right at it. Um, so we're pretty good to go here. Just want to make a quick look, make sure there's nobody directly behind us. Um, I mean, I suppose we could have gone over here for a run-up, but we're okay where we are at the moment. It's a very small airport. Um, so what the run-up entails uh, is we make sure we have our feet on the brakes, we make sure we set the brakes and put our parking brake on. Um, and then we make sure our cabin doors are closed and latched, which they are. Uh, reset my view. There we go. Uh, flight instruments set. So here, you know, again, we're going to make just double check again our uh, inches of mercury for our altimeter, 29 or 9 or 2. Uh, yeah, okay, cleared skies, that's what it would be. Um, if it was something different, again, we'd use this knob to adjust it. Um, bring it up a little bit, bring it down a little bit. Put 292, right about there. Let's make note of our current altitude. We're approximately um, 120 feet, 119 feet-ish. So that's our ground altitude. Um, so pattern altitude, what we're going to climb out to... If we were to stay in the pattern, it's typically a thousand feet above ground level and rounded up to the nearest hundreds of feet. So at 119 feet, we would call our pattern altitude 1100 feet. So it's just about a thousand above ground. Um, so we could keep that number in our head. Um, and then let's see, compass, two four there. Off two four there, so those are in agreement. If they weren't in agreement, we would use this knob down here to adjust the compass until it did match up with the magnetic up here. So let's put that back to just about two four. Um, we're not worrying about these right now because we're not using. ILS or uh, localizers or anything, or VORs, so we don't need to worry about those for now. Uh, looks like we're pretty much good to go in that respect. Um, let's do our flight controls, make sure they're free and correct again. Let's, uh, if what we're going to do here is we turn our yoke left and right to check our ailerons. Now, the rule of thumb is that when you turn the yoke, the high yoke is going to point to the aileron that should be deflecting upwards. So if we rotate the camera, we should see not see the aileron coming down. It should be up. But the other one should be opposite, so it should be coming down, which it is. You see it right there. See how that's coming down? We're pointing over to the one that should be up. Now if we rotate the yoke the other way, this aileron comes down and we're pointing to the aileron that should now be up and that is true 
so ailerons are free and correct and we'll take a look behind us make sure our elevator if we pull back on the yoke we pull back the elevator should be up it is and if we push forward the elevator should be down and it is we can see the angle of it right there it's going down um, and then we'll get on our rudder pedals and move them left and right so we go left and it should that's going to turn the airplane to the left push the right rudder pedal that will push the tail of the airplane uh, towards make the nose go to the right uh, so that's correct all right That's the instrument set. I'm on mixture. We're just uh, making sure the mixture is rich. It is. Fuel shutoff valve. Re-verify again. It is on. Um, elevator trim for takeoff. Um, I like to eyeball it at first. If I can. It's a little hard to see in this particular plane, but looks like it's close. Might reduce some. I don't know. Let's see. Let's looks okay visually but let's take a look at our markings yeah it's a little low here so let's rotate this up just until it's about at the off of takeoff that's where my preference is um, you, you'll have to play with it on your takeoffs to find out how you like it trimmed out um, but you don't want it too much nose up or too much nose down you want to be right in this range right here um, I tend to find the default tries to pitch me up too high um, so I like to try to do a little bit more nose down um, okay next we are going to do our run-up for this we're going to watch the engine RPM that's what we're going to use here we're also going to be looking at carburetor heat we're going to be looking at um, our keys for magnetos we have a right left both I went through that um, in the last video so we're gonna check each magneto um, and then we're gonna check our suction gauge make sure it's green we're gonna do um, yeah we'll check an ammeter over here make sure it's just it's well it's charging here it should be fine when we're run up so let's go ahead and do the run up and eat on the brakes parking brakes still set and we throttle up Initially to 1700 RPM. So let's do that. So there's about 1700. I'm going to come down over here. And what we're going to do is turn the key first to the left, or actually, sorry, to the right magneto first. We're going to watch the RPM. We don't want the RPM to drop more than 125. Um, but basically what we're going to do is go right magneto, watch the RPM drop, then go back to both for a minute, then come back to left for a minute, watch the RPM drop, and then come back to both again. So for the view, I'm going to actually pop down here, though, so we can see it a little more clearly. So we're at 1,700, going to the right magneto, see the RPM dropped about 100 RPM that's good you don't want a single magneto to drop more than 125 RPM so we go back to both it should come back up to 1700 let that stabilize and effectively it'll clean off the spark plugs that weren't firing from the um, left magneto because we were only on the right one that was firing so that should be pretty much cleaned off now let's go to the left magneto you want to see it drop and it does a little less than 100 but almost 100 and that's good because again we don't want to drop more than 125 we go back to both and we notice they dropped about the same which is good because the other criteria is you don't want one magneto to drop more than 50 rpm from each other so 125 on a single magneto drop but you don't want the difference to be more than 50 rpm between the two magnetos um, so that run-up check is fine while we're up at this rpm we're gonna check our suction gauge yeah it's barely in the green but it's in the green um let's come over and we're gonna pull our carb heat and check for its drop and 
it didn't really drop, did it? Oh yeah, it's dropping a little. About 50 or so RPM. Uh, that's good. That's a good check. It should only drop about 50. I just didn't notice it the first time. Hey, congrats. All right. So that pretty much completes the run up. We set that. Now we bring our RPM back down to about 1,000. That's pretty much it. Now, one thing, uh, and that's that's according to the checklist uh, from the Pilot Operating Handbook on a 1980 Cessna 152. The other thing I've done with my instructor is I've had it up to 1700 as the last piece. After I've done the magneto check and everything, we pull the car heat out like that. Watch that drop, then we bring the engine to idle. To make sure it's not going to stall out with carb heat on at idle. Now that may be something your instructor will have you do if you go real world. Maybe it won't be. It's not in the pilot operating handbook, but it's something my instructor showed me. So I just wanted to remember that piece. And of course we're doing fine there. So carb heat off, back up to a thousand. Okay. Now the end of the run up. We want to make sure. Um, strobe light is on, which it is. We should have done that already. Yep, strobe light's on. We double check our beacons on. We have our taxi lights on at the moment. Let's put our landing light on because we're about to take off. Um, heat heat's off, dome light's off. That's good. And then last is making sure our radios are set. Um, I don't worry about it too much in the simulator uh, because we use this comms tower thing up here. Um, so don't worry about that too much. But if you remember now, um, during our startup and taxi, we had set the radio to or the alt. Uh, sorry, excuse me, transponder to the 1200 VFR squat code, and we put it on standby. At this point, we're getting ready to take the active runway, so we're not going to put it to on. That'll that'll transmit and say hey, we're VFR, but we actually want to move it to ALT, and that's that means it'll transmit our altitude. It's an altitude encoding transponder. So not only will ATC see that we are VFR, but they'll also know what altitude we're flying at. So there we are. We're pretty much set up. Um, I'm going to turn on my head tracking software. There's all kinds of stuff you can do for that. Um, open track, um, track IR is actually the more famous of them all. Um, and it, it's pretty good. I know several people that have it. So what we do at this point is we will look, uh, I'll try to do it slowly, make sure there's no traffic coming. Okay, make sure there's no traffic over there. And at this point we'd make a radio call. We're gonna be taking off runway 14, which is this way. So at this point I'd say something to the effect of, uh, either Mike could say, uh, Mansfield traffic, Cessna November Juliet Bravo 7 Zula Victor is taking the act of 14 at Mansfield. And then release my parking brakes. Start rolling out to the runway. Try to stay on the yellow line best we can. My rudder pedals are moving on the floor. Isn't that fun? These arrows are a displaced threshold. Um, I'll go over that. We can use it to take off, but you can't use it to land on. You have to wait until you get up here to the numbers to land. So let's just go ahead and stop here for a minute. Our initial takeoff um, in a 152, our rotate speed is going to be 50. So when we hit here on the on the uh, airspeed indicator, that's when we'll start pulling back on the yoke a little bit. And our climb out is let me just turn that off. Uh, our climb out is going to be at 65 to 75 uh, knots. So somewhere about uh, here to here. So let's tr let's shoot for 70 on the climb out. We use our rudders to try to stay straight in the center line. And uh, let's do this. We go mixtures full rich, full throttle. We're rolling. 
Try to keep that center line. Watch for the airspeed to come alive. Yeah, all right, airspeed's alive. There's 50. Rotate a little bit and climb it out. Let's try to pitch for 70. There we go. And we are airborne. There's our altimeter right here. We're coming through 300 feet to 400 feet. And we'll get up to 1,100 feet. That's our pattern altitude. We're slowing down a little bit, so I let the nose down just a touch to gain some speed. We can use our trim a little bit more. There we go. Oh, I don't have to keep playing with the yoke too much. Just lightly trim it out. Bit of nose down up, a little, little bit of nose down trim if we're going too slow, a little nose up if we're going too fast, and we find the balance. Okay, there's the 1100, we can level out. And that's your takeoff. So in the next one, we'll, I think we'll go around and do some pattern work and we'll talk about takeoffs and landings um, and how to get set up for those cruise speeds. Um, it's all kinds of fun stuff. Anyway, hope you enjoyed it and uh, we'll see you in the next one. All right, take care.